Hey, what's up, TalkBox TV fans? This is your boy Mayhem, and I'm here to give you uh, a little new segment on TalkBox TV called TalkBox Tutor. And uh, just as the name implies, I'm going to help you with a couple different things along the line to help get your talk boxing, you know, up to that next level if you if you want to go there. So just to give you some uh, background information about myself, I used to be a house DJ for several years. I got into some really old funky stuff. All that house music's based on uh, old funk samples from the you know the 70s and 80s. So of course I got myself into some Boosie Collins and Roger and stuff. So uh, you know I've always been a fan of the of the talk box sound. I didn't really know what it was up until. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, uh, when I started listening to Roger and Zap and stuff, but um, uh, so I went out and bought myself this talk box recently. By the way, I'm on a DX100 and a, and a Rocktron Banshee. Uh, just so you know, um, I kind of saw a few people on YouTube doing their thing, and I saw P Thug uh, from Chromio doing their thing at the at the El Rey Theater in uh, in LA. That was a freaking awesome concert and uh, it kind of inspired me to get this thing so without further ado I'm going to help you get uh, your talk box up to that next level and today I'm going to talk about enunciation and how it's a, as well to put it in Mr. Groove's words, a throat and mouth thing. But before I talk about that I'm going to talk about sound and, and kind of how we perceive it and what that has to do with talk boxing. So the sound as you and I know um, it's basically uh, <laughs> your brain's interpretation of, of some physical phenomena. So sound is really variations in acoustic pressure or acoustic pressure waves of a certain frequency. Your, your ear picks that up and so you know your ear sends little electric impulses to your brain and your brain interprets that as what we hear as, as sound. So uh, I really don't have any idea how that works. Maybe you should ask a uh, biological or a <laughs> biological psychologist and maybe they'll tell you the answer but uh, anyway that part's beyond us and we don't really have to worry about it so first I'm going to talk about uh, how we can create those acoustic pressure waves with with you know the tools that we have I mean I'm using them right now saying these words so uh, let's talk about how talk boxing is a throat and mouth thing so first the mouth um, when you're talk boxing you really have to move your mouth um, as if you're saying the words uh, that you want to say when you're when you're talk boxing since we're trying to replicate somebody's actual singing voice here um, so there's two things that the talk uh, that you that you do when you say words, um, and there's two ways that you create sound. One of them is using your vocal cords, and your vocal cords produce a tone of a certain frequency, and that tone vibrates air in your throat, and it comes out as a sound. I mean, you're hearing me now say it. And uh, there's another thing um, that your mouth does with your lungs. So you use uh, you blow air through your mouth basically, and and shape that air with your mouth to create harsher sounds. And so what the talk box does, talk box does, is it, is it replaces your vocal cords, so you can create those tones. But what you can't create are certain harsh sounds of very high frequency. And so to give you an example, I'm going to take a really silly example. I'm going to say the word cataracts. Um, it has a nice uh, range of, of these sounds. So when I say the word cataracts, you can hear certain harsh sounds that the talk box, your vocal cords, can't reproduce. So that's the C sound, the T's, and the S, and the N. So I'm going to say that on the talk box, and uh, I'm going to say it first without emphasizing those extra harsh sounds, and then I'm going to do it with saying the harsh sounds. So first I'm going to just kind of mouth the words I'm going to say. So you can hear it now. So you can hear the word was completely and utterly unintelligible. So uh, I'm going to add those sounds now with my mouth because that's the only way you can reproduce them. The talk box isn't going to reproduce them. So if you want to reproduce them, you have to make the sounds yourself. So now I'm going to say when I'm saying, when, I, when I'm going to say that along with me, you know, my, my note playing, so I'm going to say cataracts. And so, I mean, that's a funky way to say a strange word that has to do with an eye condition, but uh, you get the idea. So, um, as I was saying, it's, it's a, a throat and mouth thing, so there's two parts again, moving your mouth to shape the words and also inserting those harsh sounds. And so the harsh sounds comprise of a, a couple different things, so there's the C sounds, T sounds, S sounds, but there's also H and G that are kind of hard and people get messed up with. So H, for um, instance, if I say the word happy, um, that's, that's a very hard word to say on the, on the talk box. If you just mouth the word, Happy birthday to you. You know, it comes out utterly intelligible, unintelligible. But uh, if you mouth, if you breath the word H, that H sound has a lot of breathiness too. If you go, happy, you can really hear it on the talk box. So you need to emphasize that. You can go, happy birthday to you, and you can hear it a lot better. So um, that's how you that's how you deal with those H sounds, and you can do it with you know heartbreak or something. Somebody somewhere told me this about you, baby. 
Heartbreaker. So, I mean, you get the idea. Uh, anyway, on to the next on the G sound, if I say the word long, um, the word long is kind of strange when you're trying to talk box because it kind of causes your mouth to close up back there on the tube. When that happens, the talk box can, like, if you have a lot of saliva back there, it can just vibrate it and will get this really nasty sound. Uh, but you need to work on sounds like that and make sure the tube is away from your cheek so, you, so it doesn't mess up the sound. So if I say the word long, 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 long. And another thing that you need to do when you're doing that is uh, try to time the note with the word. So if I if I let it go on too long, you hear the long g. And uh, again, you need to insert that sound at the end of the word, the g sound, but you don't need to necessarily have the note playing when you're doing that sound. So if I say long you can kind of hear the long g from the talk box. And if I release a note earlier, long and then maybe it sounds a little bit better, but you get the idea. Anyway, so on to the next thing, how talk boxing is a throat and mouth thing. So we just talked about the mouth part, now the throat part. Um, so you really need to leave your throat open. Um, as I'm saying these low notes, I'm shaping my throat so that the low, no, the low notes, uh, the tone resonates better in, in, my, uh, in my voice box and, and all that. So when you're playing on the talk box, you really need to act like you're singing these notes. So if I say, hello. I'm shaping my throat so that it's a low note, but if I play a high note, I'm shaping my throat so that it's a high note. Hello. And again, you can hear me trying to breath that H out of there. So uh, I'm going to show you what happens. Um, like I said, with the talk box, you need to leave your throat open, uh, but you can shape it a little bit, and I'm going to sh show you what happens when I just flex my throat a little bit as if I'm saying a low note to a high note and back and forth, and you can hear how um, the dynamic range of, of the tone that's coming out. I mean, it really shapes the timbre of the sound, so if I if I do that, and again, I'm only flexing my throat here. Then I'm going as if I'm singing a low note to a high note. So you really need to open your throat and and uh, make sure that sound resonates in there. And that's going to really replicate the uh, the human voice a lot better than than if you were to close off your throat. So if I would if I close off my throat as if I was talking, then it would sound really nasally. You know, if I do this. You know, I kept my throat open there, but if I close it off, you more bounce. And so it sounds a lot different. I mean, if, even if I say it, if I go more bounce, I mean, I'm closing off my throat right there, and it doesn't, it sounds nasally. And so that's a lot of problems people have. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Keep the throat open. Emphasize those harsh sounds, because that's the only way you're going to get them out of the talk box. So uh, I guess that's it for uh, Talk Box TV Episode 1. DJ Impact! Back to you, baby. Peace.